I want to read this from Wikipedia. I just want to read it from Wikipedia so the audience can go look for it. Here's cultural hegemony. When earlier uh, 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 we were talking about uh, Antonio Gramsci, this is him, okay, Antonio Gramsci, the Marxist intellectual developed a, a notion of hegemony and adv advocated the establishment of a working class intellig uh, intelligentsia. So in Marxist philosophy, cultural hegemony is a domination of cultural diverse society by the ruling class, which manipulates of the, the culture of the society, the beliefs manipulates. It manipulates the culture of society, the beliefs, the explanation, perceptions, values, mores, so that the imposed ruling class worldwide becomes accepted cultural norm, the universally valid dominant ideology which justifies the social, political, and economic status quo as natural and inevitable, perpetual and beneficial for every so social class rather than a as artificial social constructs that benefits only one ruling class. So in, in other words, the way I take it, is look, let's confuse the hell out of everybody. Let's confuse them. And if you look at in the last 18 months, what was the biggest thing that the Marxist movement got that helped them drive that agenda even more, maybe not 18 months, 15 months, is COVID. Why? COVID shut us down. So California, New York, Illinois, Michigan, a lot of these states shut down Texas, Florida, many of these places were open while these other states were not. But this shutdown got us to accept sending people money, paying people for their rent. The person who owns that real estate property that needs to collect rent is not getting rent, not from the government, not from the individual. They got a little bit of the PPP loan, but they're sitting there saying, I can't sustain this for, for too long. Oh, let's extend the moratorium. But, but, but what do you want me to do? Well, you got, you're rich. You can afford to dip into your savings. But I just barely bought this duple, you know, this uh, apartment. I don't have that much money in the bank account. I'm going to run. Doesn't matter. You are rich. You're categorically rich. You got to be able to pay for this. And gradually people said, maybe this Marxist stuff isn't that bad. Maybe this, send, we can send money to people. We, we can print money. We can send money to people. In the last 15 months, I would have to say to you, they made so much progress in the last 15 months. The agenda has won so much because the divisiveness, the, the division, the, them being divided has advanced them so much. Are you optimistic that based on history, tough heroes rise up that are not afraid to bully the bully? Or are you in a place where you feel we're at a tipping point where their agendas unfortunately going to advance even more today than ever before, simply because they have the tools today that they did not have a hundred years ago when this movement began. Okay. You've asked a terribly important question. Um, so if, if people have been partially listening up to this point, I hope they'll listen very carefully. <laughs> During the COVID crisis that we've, that we've, been subject to and also subjected ourselves to <clears throat> active duty service members. It was tough for us to get even our service members to work sometimes if they were non-mission essential personnel, because we would like so many other businesses or organizations cut down on the number of people that were, that were allowed to come to work instead of hundred percent manning, you went to 75%, then you went to 50%. And at one point you're down to 25% manning, and so our service members are staying at home trying to telework. And it was different from base to base. This was not, you know, top down driven policy, sure. base to base because it was too dangerous to come to work. But there were waivers being granted for people to go downtown in various cities and participate in Black Lives Matter rallies that were smashing windows and lighting things on fire. OK, now. <clears throat> now we have. We have a right to go and participate in rallies, protests, etc. just not in uniform. Okay, so I'll make that clear. We're, we're saying that, in fact, it was the Office of Special Counsel that, that determined Black Lives Matter last year. They determined that Black Lives Matter is not a politically partisan organization. It's not involved in politics. It's not a political organization, which is false. It's completely political. Uh, and its founders have said so since at least 2015 in interviews. They said, we're Marxist. Democrat Party is not far left enough for us. We need to move to socialism. Uh, we have a Marxist agenda. 
uh, we're trained Marxist organizers and we're trying to revolutionize the system. Okay, that's all very clear language. Uh, so it is very political. Now to say that service members cannot come to work because it's too dangerous because of COVID, but that because but we have to honor their rights to go and participate in protests, even a highly politically charged and potentially violent and dangerous protests like Black Lives Matter protests turned into during the last year is a very odd, to say, to put it lightly, uh, double standard. But here's to your point, the question of where we stand as a country, am I optimistic about potential outcomes and what courageous voices can do? This is why it's the crux of the matter. It's why it's so important to me as an active duty service member to speak up now early and often about what I'm seeing take place. For people that don't understand history, I get that you might be at odds with me or disagree with my method, my approach, my tactic. Uh, it's been embarrassing somewhat for the services for me to be talking publicly. I understand that completely. But what is far worse is for people to not say anything if they recognize how dangerous a path we're walking and to wait a year or two or three until it's far too late for us to reverse the radical trend that's occurring in our society to a, to a single to, to a single party system, I'll say. I'm not talking just, I'm not talking Republicans versus Democrats at all here. I'm talking about the establishment of a Marxist communist regime in this country. And you're saying we're well on our path to doing that. So if you like this little short clip from an interview I did, click over here to watch the entire interview. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.